Hello, this is Scott Carpenter. Welcome to part one of my new series, The Sasquatch Awareness Project. In part one, we're going to cover what is a Sasquatch slash Bigfoot. Now, as many of you may or may not know, I was involved in the uh, Sasquatch Genome Project. And this uh, study had over 110 samples, blood, hair, saliva. And it was a scientific study headed up by Dr. Melba Ketchum. And it also had several other top-line uh, scientists in on the study. And uh, it was also sponsored by Dave Pilates, my friend, uh, from North American Bigfoot Search. And this study conclusively showed that the Sasquatch is a human hybrid that the mitochondrial DNA, which comes from the female, was human, and the nuclear DNA, which comes from the male side, was unknown. Now, GenBank is a depository of over uh, 213 million uh, samples of D DNA samples, and they, what the scientists will do when they get genomes, they'll upload those genomes into GenBank, and then other scientists can uh, run uh, run their test, run their uh, DNA, and then they can compare to see if they have a unique individual or creature or new species, or if it already exists in, uh, in GenBank, if it's already been registered. The nuclear DNA of the Sasquatch was not in GenBank. They were able to get three complete genomes uh, from three different samples and that's over three terabytes worth of data and uh, they ran the uh, what's called a blast uh, search and blast is just basically like a Google engine for GenBank and uh, the blast search didn't come up with any matches so the Sasquatch has an unknown male progenitor for the nuclear DNA and again the female which is mitochondrial DNA, came back human, so it's a human hybrid. As far as the uh, origin of the Sasquatch, uh, they were able to use the mitochondrial DNA, uh, the haplogroups, to determine what areas of the world that the Sasquatch came from. And the Sasquatch, uh, in the study, a majority of them came from uh, Eastern Europe, uh, Asia, uh, the area around the Dead Sea, uh, Jerusalem, uh, Saudi Arabia, the Holy Land, that whole area. So the majority of the Sasquatch, their uh, originating area was actually uh, the Middle East, which is extremely interesting. Some from North Africa and then some from the Baltic area. I think two of the Sasquatch in the study uh, were uh, had origins in North America and they were both in Canada. So that's the genetic makeup of the Sasquatch. A human hybrid with a human female progenitor and a nuclear DNA from an unknown male. So let's move on to uh, the physical attributes. Let's talk about size. The Sasquatch uh, can range anywhere from uh, an adult Sasquatch, I should say, can range anywhere from 6 foot to 12, 15 foot tall. There's been some reported uh, as tall as 20 feet or bigger. Uh, there's some in Texas that have been captured on video at a distance that their heads were above a 20 foot eave on the side of a barn and some of the footprints have been well over 25 inches so that would that would be something in the neighborhood of 20 to 25 feet now typically depending on the area of the country that uh, you live in the Sasquatch in the area can be smaller or larger uh, on average seven and a half to eight feet but 10 and 12 feet are common the females are usually smaller uh, six to seven, eight feet. The males, eight, nine, ten, twelve feet. Uh, the uh, Sasquatch has ch children, has babies, just like uh, humans do, and um, they uh, are just maybe a little bit larger. It's been reported than human infants, 
depending on you know what the size of the mother and the father were and then they mature of course they mature much much faster than human beings uh, from what we can tell uh, they usually reach maturity uh, somewhere around age 12 and at that, that point they're um, they're quite large and they can reproduce and uh, usually uh, somewhere around that time they're uh, made it up and paired up and just depending on the situation whether they st stick around the clan that they're in or they move on and start their own. Let's talk about their appearance. The Sasquatch are genetically diverse, very diverse and uh, you can have anything from uh, hair colors that could from white to black to brown to red uh, they have a reddish brown blonde uh, blue uh, gray I think uh, they've been reported like Labrador retriever color uh, some of the most com more common colors of course black and uh, the reddish brown uh, in, in the west uh, black dark black and uh, though around here in my area of East Tennessee there's a large contingent of white ones so uh, genetically as far as their colors uh, there's a just like human beings there's a wide diversity uh, their skin color can vary from uh, from gray to black uh, to uh, like a leathery brown color uh, they've also been reported with uh, uh, Caucasian uh, skin tone and so uh, they could uh, go through the gambit uh, normally as far as their facial appearance they're extremely human looking it many times shocks the witnesses uh, how human looking the Sasquatch is uh, typically they have high cheekbones uh, flat wide nose uh, the mouth is usually wider than a human being's mouth and like a human being's mouth comes usually comes to the inside corner of the eye where the Sasquatch goes to the center or even to the edge of the eye usually there's a larger gap uh, between the nose the uh, base of the nose and the top lip uh, the forehead is usually a crusted brow uh, the eyes are deep set many people you know reports you can't see their eyes it was very difficult to see their eyes if at all uh, they're just very dark. Uh, the ears are set on the side of the head and depending on their genetics they're, sometimes their ears are small other times there's some that have their ears are large and stick straight out it just it just depends but for a majority of them their ears are smaller and set on the side of their heads. Uh, lots of times the hair covers them so the ears aren't even seen by, uh, by the witness. Uh, as far as the hairline and hair uh, they usually have, as a rule, most of the time they usually have facial hair like a, a, a beard, uh, just a lower beard. They don't have many times a report of no hair on the cheeks or under the, uh, under the nose. They don't have a mustache, but there have some have been literally covered totally with hair in the facial area, just, just, just a little bit under, you know, starting right under the eyes. So, uh, but as generally, they basically don't have any hair on their cheeks, or their uh, uh, they don't have a mustache. It's just it's just a beard. And now I've heard, had reports of some that have been very sparsely haired all over, and uh, look extremely human. Or some of them, you know, uh, one that was witnessed was kind of he was physically you know eight ten foot tall but he had very sparse hair and uh, had uh, Caucasian toned skin and uh, the witness described him as being like a caveman he still had the the brow and the protruding brow and uh, the deep set eyes but hardly any hair uh, they have varying hairlines uh, just like we do there's some of them that go in bald and the hairs go back up on their heads and they usually let their hair grow out and uh, but uh, they've been, uh, you know, they'll groom themselves and they'll cut their hair and uh, they'll pull their hair back. Uh, and some some have been seen with ponytails and uh, they'll they'll cut the hair to keep it. Some will cut the hair to keep it off their brow. 
uh, many of them have what we call the raccoon look and what that is is you know they have this large cut crusted brow that comes up and goes down and, and when I mean crusted I mean it protruding and uh, what they'll do is they'll just cut the hair along the very top of that brow so they get this Eddie Munster look or you know, what we call the raccoon look where the hair comes over and kind of points down and then you have these dark deep set eyes so it kind of gets a raccoony appearance and then um, they also um, have been known to just have uh, cut it straight across so you know but uh, around my area that we have the ones that have the raccoon effect uh, cutting it you know cutting it just to follow uh, follow the brow as far as uh, the hair on the body uh, it's not fur it's human like hair it's hair it's like I'm hairy I have hair on my arms so that's the cut that's the texture and and the, the look except just more of it it's not a fur top look and uh, it's uh, usually uh, four to six eight inches long uh, they've been reported to have a cape on the shoulders of longer hair the back you know is thicker hair and uh, many uh, you can see the skin through the chest and the and the belly so that the hair sparser on the uh, the front uh, usually the legs are hairy and uh, from the waist down they're pretty hairy though genitalia can be seen sometimes and sometimes not uh, if it's a male it just depends uh, uh, of course their hair, hair varies in thickness for the most part they go naked uh, they don't wear any clothes but that is not you know 100% they have been seen wearing uh, skins uh, they'll steal clothes or blankets and wear those so uh, they have been known in certain situations to, to wear clothes or at least cover themselves with blankets, uh, skins, or other uh, things like that uh, when it's cold. The hair on the body uh, sometimes shows uh, a natural wear. In other words, like their knees will be, the hair will be worn off on their knees and their buttocks and their elbows. Uh, sometimes there's wounds and the, the, the scars call you know there's no hair growing on the scar so in uh, summary uh, the Sasquatch uh, is a human hybrid mitochondrial DNA uh, for the female the nuclear DNA from the male uh, the female is a human and the nuclear DNA from the male is unknown so they are a human hybrid of some sort. Uh, there is uh, great genetic diversity within the, within them. Uh, there's multiple, I guess you could call it subspecies, where it, you, they range from uh, hair color from white to black to red to blonde, uh, skin tone, black, uh, gray, Caucasian, uh, it really goes the whole gambit. As far as hair coverage, uh, they're covered mostly with hair on average. Uh, the face, facial hair is uh, sometimes it's full face. Most of the time, uh, it's uh, it's it's a lower beard with no mustache and, or no hair on the cheeks. And uh, one thing of note, I forgot uh, the women. The females of the species they'll have a beard as well not always sometimes the females have no facial hair and the hair kind of starts around the neck or down but uh, there have been many females reported because uh, they had breast uh, with uh, you know a beard and the Gimlin Patterson uh, Sasquatch uh, had uh, you know full face hair but was a female so that's uh, part one uh, of uh, what is a Sasquatch Bigfoot. Uh, part two will be coming out soon. I appreciate you for watching and um, until next time, God bless and take care.